everybody, welcome. 8th of November. Yes, we are feeling a little bit of cold, so we've got to get prepared, haven't we? Just here in the studio, just realised I've got to get on and make some pots. So, uh, a bit of clay here. I've got to start rattling off some mugs, you know. I've got to get into a production mode. Just give this a few more turns. I've already, I've already needed it once. So, I roll it into a cone. Right, we want 14 ounces, let's do it. 14 ounces. So, the way to do this, a lot of people when I say, okay, let's ball up clay, immediately they go for their wires to start cutting off. That's not what you want to do. Okay. Okay, we've got it set on ounces, so I want 14 ounces. All right, it's 1336. 14 exactly. Don't believe me. There it is. 14 ounces. So the idea is have a bag, a supermarket bag, okay? All right? The little pieces, smack them all together. All right? Be careful you don't trap air. Okay, let's do another 14 ounces. Here it is. 13.61, okay, 14.49, too much, 14.03, good enough. See, this is much quicker than cutting it off with a wire, 12.3, because you can't gauge, you can't gauge very accurately cutting off a larger lump with a wire. You need to do it by hand. Okay, now put these lumps in your bag. 12.48, 13 13.61, 13.79, 14, 14. Good, that'll do. So you wanna get I'm going to get quick at this, you see, because it's a sort of 12 12.45, 13.12, 13.5, 13.8, 14.10. Okay, 14 14 so if you've got a lot of little pieces like this, you see, that I'm adding to the main lump, just be careful that you don't, that you don't trap air when you smack them all together. All right. 13.9, 14.1, 13 14.03, that'll do nicely. So you can get quite quick at this once you get in the way of doing it. 12.83, that's probably gonna to be too much, 14.8. 14, 13.96, okay, 14.03, there it is. Okay, that'll do just for the minute, okay? Because we are in a hurry. We have got to shoot clay, clay pigeon. <laughs> I'm in the middle of making a bunch more of these, um, these tankards which incidentally, I got the idea from an English potter. I found one of his mugs and I thought, oh, that's kind of nice. I'll try and make some of those. So, let's see. Can you see that? All right, so that's where the inspiration is coming from. Um, slightly more dumpy form, wider at the base. All right. So, 
forgot the name of the English potter. I like his work actually. Uh, he's an older, he's, he's an older guy. He's probably older than me, you know. Old as the hills. <laughs> All right, so. I'm throwing these, they're 14 ounces, but I'm not throwing them to a gauge because I'm want to. i trying to just sort of see if I can do it without a gauge because you'll find when you get going and get a bit more a little bit more skilled, you'll find that you know with the same weight of clay for each lump you'll find that you're going to get pretty much if you've got the form already in your head, you're going to get pretty much the same height. But I do have a ruler there handy. Um, so I'm trying to make these a little bit... a little bit faster than I would normally. See, that's already five inches, I bet you. No, it isn't. Four and a half. Okay. Let's get down there, pull that bottom section, and now this top section here. So they're basically, these ones I've been doing them, um, Five, about five and a quarter. That's that's exactly five now. Okay. So you've got the collar here on the top, which serves as a visual. A visual kind of, um, yep. Uh, a visual, what's the word? It enhances the beauty. Okay, let's. And it also adds stability to the top of the the top of the pot stability what I, what do i mean by that i mean so that it's it won't warp you know because when you've got the handle on the side of a pot once it's up at okay let's cut this guy off clean hands and lift. Oh, whoops. Didn't do a very good job of that one. That mirror got in the way. Okay. He'll be alright. I'll straighten him out when he's a little bit stiffer. Gonna bring another light just into the picture here. Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? We'll just keep it there for the moment. Aye. Forming the base, now squidging it in and now coning it up. Don't forget, keep it coned in at the top. Been doing a lot of little firings in that little kiln, and I was 
I want to get back to firing my big kiln and I need more pots, you know. For more. more substantial quantity of pots. So. Yes, I know you, somebody will say, well, Simon, why don't you just set a gauge? Well, I, you're right, I should do, really. I'm just lazy, you know. Do you ever get lazy? You just sort of, just want to do it freehand, you know. I just want to, in a way, it's a sort of test, not a test of your skill, well, a test of your repeat throwing ability, I suppose. But you need to get into a, a rhythm. Probably talking to a camera and trying to do it is not the best idea, but now you'll see all the ones on the board in front of me, I they're all thrown like this. You know, we're not gonna be I used to work in a factory to engineering pieces, you know, on a lathe to thousandths of an inch. Well, those days are gone. <laughs> Those days are gone. Pew! Off with his head. Ah! Right, let's get that mirror down. Okay, I've cleaned my hands on the side of my water pot there. If you do that right, you should find that you can, you don't have to do anything else. You know what I mean? Ah! You don't have to use cloths and all sorts of things. Use your water pot, and you can. You get your surfaces of your palms nice and nice and well dry dry enough, you know, to be able to put my mirror back quickly. Yeah, we've got a workshop tomorrow. I've got six people coming tomorrow actually. Now the next workshop I have is in two weeks time and I've had two people who were coming on that and they have backed out so that workshop has four people on it that means that we have two spare slots available if, if anybody wants to come on a workshop at the end of November before the winter sets in and we're all immobilized and we're all hunkered down in our little wherever we are unless you're living down south of course and then uh, you'll be sunbathing <laughs> yes if somebody wants me to come and teach a workshop over the winter down in some sunny spot just give me a shout, okay? I will probably jump at the opportunity. La la la, what's the value of this one? He's five. He's five. He's a little bit short, actually, this one. Right, 
leather. Sponge. Cut off wire. Ugh. Clean hands. And off he comes. All right, so these, these, I'll just show you these. I've just thrown these in the last half an hour or so, okay? If you look down the board, they're not thrown to a gauge, but you will see that, yeah, they're, they're not 100%. There's one in the middle here. He's a little bit, he's a little bit tall, but you will be surprised how good you can, how good you can get them. Another one bites the dust. Hey ho. Ah, let's just bring that camera in for a, a shot of detail. All right, there it is. I'm sorry, the last video I made, the, I don't know why sometimes this camera just switches itself off for some reason. You know, it may be that the card is, I should replace the card maybe. I've used this card now for some time. And I formatted it and formatted it and formatted it, I don't know how many times. Tons of times. But it was fully charged up, but sometimes it just switches off, you know. It's the technology. It has its say, it does its thing, you know. <laughs> So, yes, just occasionally we have a video that doesn't. I'm not there to say goodbye to you all. But that's, at the end of the day, you know, people, some people watch videos all the way through, you know, but quite often people, they don't watch to the very end anyway, so. Do, 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 do. Get a bit of height there, that must be up nearly five inches. Yep, five and an eighth. And I'm widening it there in the belly, and now here it's slightly concave. There, and then it has that little check in the mirror. Yes, get yourself a mirror. If you don't throw with a mirror, you need a mirror, you know, to help you scrutinize what you are doing. You know, you are making pots with, with intent and purpose, intentionally trying to um, achieve a certain shape, a certain form. You know, you need a mirror. I never had one when I was doing my training with my dad, but we didn't use mirrors at all. I didn't come along till quite a bit later in my throwing, potting career. Clean, clean, stop the wheel, lift. And there he is. Another bites the dust. See, it's good, it's good for you to see, for those of you who are learning, you know, and wanting to improve your potting. It's good for you to see just pots thrown one after another fairly quickly. She comes. Keep the water flowing, you know. A lot of people's problems stem from the fact that their watering is sloppy, you know. 
they were sloppy with their with their with their motor vehicles and keeping the engines lubricated as they are with their pot. You know, we'd have we'd have cars broken down all over the place, wouldn't we? To keep the water flowing, the water is the lifeblood of your pot. It keeps it. It keeps the pot on centre. You see, it keeps you. It keeps the forces equal all the way around the pot. As you are. Come on, where's that? where's that five inches? Give me five inches. See this bit here is a little bit concave because the handle is going to come off here so you want room for your hand there a little bit. If you know what I mean. So throwing stick down there. Bevel, don't forget the bevel. Underneath, he's looking a bit wide on the top so I've got to bring him in a bit. Yeah, make adjustments, changes as you go. As we talked about yesterday in the last teaching video, you've got to you've got to keep an eye on the form, use your mirror and make the necessary adjustments, you see. There he is, that's that sponge. Cut off wire and straight through. Another bites the dust. Clean hands, and now I get right to it, lift it. Oh, oh what fun. And another. Yes, so a lot of people have been writing to me about the, the PDF for the kiln. I've got all the photos done, I've got them in different folders. I'm going to put them on a stick. And then we're going to put them, get them made into this PDF. That's going to be happening, hopefully, soonish. I know these things always take longer than I, 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 I say things, but I don't always get around to doing them, you know. Just a lot to do, you know, when you're doing pottery like I did. You know, all different aspects of it. Every day is you know, mail order, wrapping up pots, making videos, sorting out emails, people who want wheels. Gosh, you know, it's like today, you know, get out in the pottery like this today, that's, that's, that's great. It's kind of like a luxury. I like, I don't get out here necessarily every day, you see. I want to, but I, I can't. It's just other things pull me. That's just the way it is, isn't it, I suppose. All of our lives are busy. And it's not it's not always as cut and dried as you as you think. But we get there in the end. We persevere, we don't give up, we keep practicing, that's it, we keep practicing. See, keep practicing applies to just life in general, doesn't it? It doesn't, doesn't apply just to making pots. Did you think I meant just make pots, keep practicing? Well, that's what I did really, but you can apply it to all sorts of other areas of your life. You know, if you're discouraged, well, don't give up. Hang on in there. Hang on in there. As Winston Churchill says, said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Don't give up. Don't stick around there. Move on. Move on. There it is. Oh, yes. I think I've got one more.
a lump of clay. Let's do it. Let's get the camera back a bit. Just a bit now. We've we've done we've done three there. This will be the fourth one. Let's do this one and then that will call it a day. Yeah, the old leech treadle wheel. Don't don't think it's a slow wheel to make pots on it, isn't it? It's 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 actually quite fast. It's a great production, a great production wheel. But Simon, it's only a foot operated wheel. How could it be? I know, but. Yeah. It's fast. The wheel isn't going particularly fast. But I can stop it and start it really quickly. And The wheel, the wheel you see is like, it's an extension of my body. Whereas an electric wheel is not an extension of your body. It's just an appendage. But this is an extension of my body. I become part of the wheel. I am the motor. Bring it on up, bring it on up. Quickly, yep. That's good. A little fat in there. And bring it on there. Narrow it in a touch. Narrow it in, you see I'm making an adjustment. Got to make adjustments as you go. The pot isn't just going to happen, you know. You've got to create it. You've got to form it with your hands. Make adjustments as you go. Okay, down there. Throwing stick. Bevel. Clean back the wheel head. Leather, sponge, cut off one, cut, clean hands, stop the wheel and lift off. There it is folks, we just rattled off, or oh, we did some over there as well didn't we on that board, I don't know how many we've done just in this course of this, but let's just quickly take the, before this memory card gives out on me again. <laughs> All right, so a little bit loosely thrown. Um, yeah, this camera gives a little bit of a, a funny proportion because of the wide angle lens, but yeah, so All right, so have a go at doing a little bit of production. Throwing up your game a little bit with a little bit of, you know, banging them out a bit. It'll do you a world of good. All right, if you want to come to the workshop, as I said, if you're interested in a leech wheel, if you're interested in a workshop, uh, in two weeks time, I'll have a couple of spaces free. So come and join me here. In Milheim. Meanwhile, keep practicing. I'll see you around town. Bye for now.